A Stuart number four model steam engine restoration. This is part two. Modifying the exhaust outlet and cleaning up the unpainted parts. The reason that I need to modify the exhaust outlet is the hole in it is too small and it was very much restricting the flow of the steam or compressed air that was leaving the engine. So what you see me doing here is drilling out the exhaust manifold with a tapping size drill so I can thread it 3 8 by 32 threads per inch and as I mentioned many times generally speaking for ME threads, model engineering threads the tapping size drill is two imperial drill sizes down from the finished size of the threaded hole and if my memory serves me well because I'm not in the workshop I'm sat at a computer editing this video the tapping size drill that you've just seen me use is 11 30 seconds of an inch it's a good idea to try and memorise the sizes, and I do appreciate that if someone has been brought up and educated in metric, then Imperial appears to be witchcraft. All you need to do is buy an Imperial drill set, because the sizes of the drills are printed on the front of the holes that hold the drills, so you just look at the number, it's quite simple. After drilling the hole, threading the hole, and then countersinking the hole in the flange, and in this clip you can clearly see the countersink and the reason for countersinking the flange is so that the steam union screws all the way in because on any steam union there's a little bit of unthreaded part and I don't want to use a washer for this. Over to my small boxford lathe now and what I'm about to do is machine off the excess part of the steam union that's sticking through the flange and so that the part doesn't either fall out of the chuck and destroy itself or get chewed up by the chuck jaws I'm screwing the fitting into a union nut and the union nut is then clamped in the chuck jaws. I'm only holding the part by the union nut in the chuck jaws to remove the bulk of the material from the steam union that's sticking through the flange. What I need to do next is remove the steam union fitting from the union nut and hold the steam union fitting very lightly by the threads and take an extremely fine cut across the flange. This does two things. It eliminates the possibility of a ridge between the flange and the machine steam fitting. And it also ensures that the flange itself is at a perfect 90 degrees to the steam union. And don't forget, if you're holding components by the thread, make sure that all operations are done very delicately. In this clip, I'm drilling out the fitting to 3 16 of an inch in diameter, which is the internal diameter of a piece of quarter inch copper pipe. And as I withdraw the fitting on the end of the drill, you can see there is no damage whatsoever to the thread. Back on the bench, you can see the fitting in great detail. It's quite a nice thing. No marks on the hexagon part, which there would have been had I have put the hexagon part in the chuck. So this is now quite a nice looking fitting, far better than it was originally. And it's the correct size to connect a quarter inch pipe. And now it's time to move on to the clean up operation. This is a piece of the cladding that would have been supplied with the kit when it was new, but unfortunately now it is rusty. So there's nothing I can do about that. I can't re-chemically blacken it or re-anodize it or whatever the process was in the first place, so I'm going to paint it. But before I can do that, I have to remove all traces of the rust. The way this wrapper has been bent to fit around the cylinder is a bit strange. It's been bent in steps, obviously bent by hand on camera it looks much worse than it is. Once it's all been rubbed down then most of the ridges will disappear and when it's painted I think it will look okay. But it's going to take me about five years to do it with this piece of scotch bright so I moved over to some emery paper. First of all coarse grit working my way down to wet or dry sandpaper. Then it became much smoother. Moving on now to the pot of cellulose thinners with the parts in it. And as you can see, the paint has more or less fallen off the flywheel. The varnish is still there, though. I don't know what this varnish was, but whatever it was, it was very good at sticking to the metal, but not very good at protecting the metal from rust. Here's a good tip. I'm using a brass wire brush. But rather than use the wire brush in my hand and brush the parts, I put the wire brush in the vise and rub the parts on the wire brush. I find this a much better way of doing it. If you have the wire brush free in your hand, you're generally going to wire brush your other hand with it, but doing it this way you can accurately position the part and it's a lot safer. You can also do this with a steel type wire brush, but that's a bit severe, that will scratch all the parts. So a brass wire brush like this is a very useful thing to have in the workshop. I actually use it quite a lot. 
In this clip I'm cleaning up the steam chest and it's making short work of the varnish that was on there but underneath the steam chest is just a rough milled finish so the wire brush is not going to do anything about that but at least it gets rid of the varnish. To get rid of any random tool marks from the steam chest and there are plenty of those I'm using my one inch belt sander and at this point of the tutorial I would just like to say do not do this under any circumstances if you've never done it before. What you need to do is practice with random pieces of metal on a belt sander to see what happens. The tool marks were quite deep on this steam chest so here I'm using the more aggressive 4 inch belt sander. That made short work of the tool marks, now everything's quite smooth. Then it was back onto the 1 inch belt sander to do some detailing. You can get very very good results doing it this way but only with practice and experience. Just one false move and the part will be ruined. So be extremely careful if you're doing this and once again I will reiterate try it on a piece of scrap metal first. The 1 inch belt sander belt is quite worn and fairly smooth and does quite a good job of polishing the part but not as good as this. I don't want a highly polished part. I looked at a video the other day of a beam engine made by someone and it was a thing of absolute beauty but it looked to me like a lot of the parts had been chrome plated which is very unsteam engine like as far as I'm concerned. It was a very beautiful engine though, congratulations to the maker but it sounded like a pneumatic drill which spoilt the effect somewhat. Anyway, back to the job. I'm using a piece of emery paper over the edge of the surface plate because I need to clean up the top corners of the steam chest. I really don't want to round off any of the corners of the steam chest so I'm being very gentle with this part on the edge and throughout all of this operation I've been using some oil on the emery paper. Eventually, after considerable time, I did it a lot longer than I've shown on the video, I'm now using some scotch Brite to finish off the component. As I said earlier, I don't want it to be highly polished, so it's not going on the polishing spindle, because the scotch Brite finish will be perfectly fine. Using exactly the same process, I cleaned up the cylinder cover, as well as the steam chest cover. And I must admit, all of the parts look a good bit better now. So after a quick wipe with the cloth, I'd just like to say that's it for now. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.